Hi, Karina here, your Loose Living Coach. How are you guys? If you're new to my channel, I'm Karina. I'm an astrologist, transformational life coach, and I'm here to give you the energetic update for the upcoming new moon in Gemini solar eclipse. Yes. So we're just kind of waning away, kind of resting after that very intense full moon eclipse in Sagittarius that happened on May 26th. We are in the eclipse portal right now. There's a lot of shifts and changes and timelines uh, changing and a lot of new energy coming in and a lot of unknown. So let's get right into it. All right. So we have a new moon, solar eclipse, having at 19 degrees of Gemini. This is June 10th at 352 AM. And I wanted to read the degrees for 19 degrees of Gemini just to introduce the energy and to start and kind of give you a, a feel of what this new moon is going to feel like. Okay. So the title of this is strange creatures peeking out from behind trees. I thought this was a very interesting title as there is a lot of different energy um, coming up and opportunities and things that we didn't even know was possible or existed. So um, I'll just read this. Surprises, destiny shocks, stunning events present uh, present a way to evolve rapidly from the daring and the wild. Whatever you assume and prepare for, the moment shall be different. Nothing is meant to be straightforward here. You must be kept on the alert, prompt, be golded, be gilded, tricked, anything to help you leap off. The biggest trick is to identify consciously with an innocent, youthful, almost hopelessly ingenious persona, and then to magnetize a destiny that would never come to such a basic kind of person. This way, the edge, the tension, the joke is perfectly poised stretch just far enough to trip you up every time the greater self finds its ways to get a little self who wants to hide in safe places when instead a much larger destiny is in the works which assists upon knocking at your door preferably the back door or side door to jump right in scare the living daylights out of you and wake you up from the next scintillating adventure along a vast and unlimited spectrum. Okay, so that's pretty intense, right? Lots of shifts and lots of changes. Now I will read Mercury. Just because the new moon in Gemini is ruled by Mercury, and Mercury is at 20 degrees of Gemini. And this is a bull stung by a scorpion. That's the title. The elaborate ritual of putting yourself through life or death crisis to determine what you are made of and how far you are willing to go in this life, choosing from expanded facilities, the optimal situations to enact this battle royale, selecting what is karmically familiar variations of old themes, including bondage and freedom. When you are trapped, caught, stuck, or a furious Inner force asserts itself and can reconfigure everything, but it is a high stakes ritual drama and loaded with real dangers. You must check yourself out in ultimate ways, for there is surging in your blood an impulse towards liberation, which cannot be distorted in any way. An extraordinary journey through radical tests and trials of initiatory intensity. It is all about guts and stripping away everything but the true inner direction and if you must slay and move through illusions on every front that is just how it is you cannot survive any longer 
on old ways to do it. It is time to welcome the enemy into your very midst and discover that there are no enemies. So yeah, we'll leave it at that. So what is going on during a new moon solar eclipse? Well, the moon is passing between the earth and the sun. The sun and the moon are aligned, sitting together in the sky with Mercury. They are all combining energies. Mercury is being tamed by the retrograde, as well as the heat of the sun. Geminis and Virgos, if you have any planet in your natal birth chart pertaining Gemini or Virgo, you might be feeling the slowdown and you are definitely going to be feeling these shifts. So light changes what and how we see things. The light from the sun is shining through the lens of the twins. So how we see and what we see as the light is shining is the structures of Saturn with the lens of Aquarius. If we don't like what we see, change the lighting. How are you perceiving the world of relationships at this time? How are you seeing the physical world? We have a choice. There is dichotomy in the universe, right? There's, there's uh, magnetics, right? There's uh, the law of balance, attraction, and um, the yin and the yang, the light and the dark. And for some people, the dark is referred to bad and the light is referred to good. So if there is balance in everything in the universe, how are you choosing to see the world and the people in it? What are you entertaining? Okay, there's a split happening right now. Some are choosing to stay in 3D consciousness and others are choosing to upgrade to higher dimensions like 5D consciousness. Now, the, node, the nodal point, so the North Node is in Gemini as well, and this has been happening, okay? The North Node is a destiny point, and this destiny point is being triggered by this eclipse at a nine-degree orb. So this is a brand new beginning and a start into something new for us. We are connecting more with networks, okay? Many networks, especially since the COVID, were more uh, online, virtually based in a lot of our work and the way that we're communicating. So the only way to survive this collective transformation with the value systems changing and the internet changing its restrictions and censoring and hiding people's content is to stay connected in our smaller groups and networks within our communities, our family and friends, and starting our smaller networks within the online platforms, or maybe even creating our own websites, our own platforms, so we don't get censored. Okay, and maybe sharing those onto the main platforms to drive more traffic to the uncensored sites. So the start gives you clarity into who we are becoming and aligning with the people in the situations that will assist going forward in our divine destiny and our soul's evolutionary path. So our intuition and our emotions are speaking loudly right now during this transit. So listen to where they are guiding you. This is huge. We need to listen to our intuition, our gut, our third eye, um, because there's so much information that is coming in through our eyes and our minds. Like we could be overthinking things, but we're not thinking clearly because the Mercury retrograde and the squares that are happening, you, you may be aligning into a very different role than you expected. And this could be in your career, um, in your relationship, um, in your living situations. Okay. You might be aligning to something very different. For example, like a career woman, and now you're having 
feelings of having a family and nurturing the maternal cycle. So moon and sun is conjunct Mercury and Gemini. Now Mercury is really close with the sun. Okay. Cause it's aligning. So it could be getting kind of exhausted or hidden or burnt up. <laughs> um, as well as the uh, retrograde. So look for Gemini in your chart and see where this new moon eclipse is happening and what's really slowing down. So this is a dynamic transit with so much going on. Shifts that are taking place are moving quickly. We're connecting with our soulmates and talking about future plans. So be adaptable and be open to change in desires, purpose, and path because that's what eclipses do. Eclipses are God speaking. So this new moon is also square to Neptune and Pisces. And this is why I say, listen to your intuition, because this is not the easiest transit for seeing things clearly or answers to questions that we might be having. Why are we feeling a certain kind of way? Neptune is challenging us to see things far ahead. So very similar to like driving in the fog. We're like transiting the unknown right now during this uh, eclipse of portal. It's like if you had plans and you had an idea of where and what you were, what you were doing, and then plans change because of the weather. You will not have a well thought out plan for the new situation. This could be unsettling. We're not sure if the plans will stick or whether they'll clear up or if we are doing something totally different that day. So we are being asked to enjoy this ride because there is a lot of things that are shifting. The universe is taking us on an adventure. So be ready for anything. Trust in the process and surrender to outcome is my biggest advice. You will have to embrace the unknown at this time. Now, this new moon is trying to our karmic Saturn. Okay. So these things that are being that 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 are being prepared and presented will have a long-term effect on our future. So it's a very important that we are taking our time in really seeing things through until we can see things clearly. This will create more stability in the future, these shifts. You will focus on achieving your long-term goals and staying well-balanced. This means that other areas of your life do not need to suffer from your strong work ethic and determination. So Venus is in Cancer at nine degrees during this transit, and it's trining over to Jupiter in Pisces. This is a harmonious energy flow between two beautiful planets. This is such a relaxing and enjoyable transit that brings love, romance, optimism, affection, and just an overall sense of well-being. Like, I feel lucky. Like, I am so lucky. And, like, we just have to embrace that the blessings of the universe and, and have gratitude for what is manifesting in our life. If you had a falling out with someone, now is a good time to pick up the pieces and talk things out. Now Mars is in Cancer as well. So the masculine and the feminine are in Cancer. The feminine is uh at the very last degrees of the first deacon of the moon. She's really feeling into her nurturing and and uh, loving motherly side, and masculine is at the very last degrees of the third deacon, which is Neptune, which is very uh, dreamy, um, and it could be a bit delusional, maybe a little isolated, um, and just wanting to go inward, sleep 
We might be getting a lot of dreams as well at this time. Uh, we are playing out scenarios and situations in our head. We could be. Um, but this Mars trying Neptune is, is very passionate. Okay. So oh, we will have uh, spiritual connections available to us. We'll want to maybe be creative and or dance or play music. It's a really good time for that. Okay, so um, Venus and Cancer is square to Chiron in Aries, which is healing our ego. But there is an inner conflict happening between our current situation like maybe our our current relationships or our relationships with money, of finances or romantic relationships. This could be due also to our childhood dynamics. How were you raised in viewing relationships and how were you treated in learning your value and how you were shown about money dynamics. All these things are past karmic cycles. They are cycles that have been passed down generation to generation. And we are breaking these karmic cycles because we are more awakened to these kinds of dynamics. So this could bring up these karmic cycles that we are breaking. Okay, we are trying to move past the realities of our family roots if they are not serving our higher purpose. We are redefining our relationships, our value to the world, and our relationships with money as well. Now, the masculine Mars is opposing Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. This is a very strong transit. Pluto and Mars are both rulers of Scorpio. Scorpio is uh, the hidden things. It's taboo things. It's the death and rebirth. It is um, connecting with others and sharing our resources. This is creating some opposition in the masculine of taking charge of our feminine. We are working hard to open ourselves up to receive the nurturing uh, universe's blessings upon our life. We are driven to create and build a solid foundation, breaking down our old karmic cycles and family cycles. We are battling within to fight our past ways in efforts to better our lives and our future and our future children. Strength is needed to transmute these dark, darker energies of aggression and dominance. This is a fight or flight energy. So be mindful not to just drive your blessings out of your life as the enemies are coming up against your efforts of achieving your goals. And when I read that little passage, it said, enemies, you cannot survive any longer on old ways to do it. It is time to welcome the enemy into your very midst and discover that there are no enemies. And that is a very strong statement. Okay. The enemies are often found within. And so therefore, there are no enemies. And these, this is the battle that's happening within and during this transit. So let me read this sentence again. Okay, this is a fight or flight energy. So be mindful not to just drive your blessings out of your life as the enemies are coming up against your efforts of achieving your goals. We. Make sure that we are not holding ourselves back from achieving our goals. If your goals are not working out, transform them into something that works until those particular doors start opening up. There's no, there's no need to, to, to push and fight for something that is not available at this moment. 
So keep your integrity and act on high levels of morals, or you will immediately feel the karma return in the karmic cycles. Okay. All right. So the ascendant is 15 degrees of Taurus for the chart in the San Francisco Bay area. So this is a location dependent transit reading for Venus is in cancer at nine degrees in the third house. That is what's ruling this ascendant for this location. The focus is on what brings us joy. Okay. A lot of focus is on the home, family, cousins, siblings, friends, and communicating and interacting with them. Okay. So there's also new friendships, new outlooks on our current friendships, understanding who our friends are, seeing the comparison of family relationships and our friendships. And it is time to start focusing on our value, not only in relationships, but also how we are providing for ourselves. Is your home reflecting you? Is your friends valuing you? Is your job paying you enough and valuing you and your time? Is your partnerships valuing us? Are there something, are, are there some things coming up that has been hidden that we did not see? And how does this change the dynamics going forward? So these are the questions that we should be asking for this transit. This is a time of much busyness, especially within our heads and our minds. We could be overthinking things as well as misunderstandings because Mercury is not strong right now and during this transit. We are reevaluating what is working and what is not in our relationships and career paths. How are you providing for yourself financially in relationship? This is affecting you. Wait, no. Questions? Is this affecting you in a positive way? What has left your life shifted or changed? Whatever that has left is making room for the new that will be revealing itself, which will be more aligned with your path. What has come into your life and what has that awakened within you? And how are you evolving and changing with these new relationships? The things that want to go, let them go. And the things that want to stay, let them stay. All right. So the last and definitely not least aspect for this new moon solar eclipse is the forever year long square that's happening between Saturn and Uranus. This is the second. I think the first was in February. And we have more going on until December. But this is a pretty hard and challenging aspect for intuitives and creatives. Okay. So the old world job. And the new world passion are battling for your time. Okay. Who here is juggling two different careers? Two different jobs. One of the old world, one of the new world. Do you have the moneymaker job taking your time away from your passion and your purpose? A lot of us have been experiencing this across humanity. How can you make more time for your passions to make the passions your paycheck. What needs to happen to get you in your full-time purpose and your 5D, right? Your 5D job, not your 3D job. We all want to be on purpose in our lives so we can feel that fulfillment. So I hope that helped. And I hope that was clear in my transmissions. (laughs) You know, having a hard time with that Saturn Uranus square is just jumble dumble and Jupiter just expanding the Pisces energy is not, um, is not helping, but this is Mercury retrograde as well. I had to re-record this probably like three times, but, um, 
This is uh, the third, the charm, I think. All right. So let's talk about retrograde planets because we have three going on right now. The first was Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. Okay. Giving a little rest and the old world is ramping up. And you could probably tell if you watch the news as things are flying forward, going in the direction that we did not want it to go. Now, this Pluto retrograde started April 28th and will be retrograde until August or October 7th of 2021. Then we have Saturn retrograde that started on May 23rd and will be retrograde until October 21st. This slows down our money, our productivity, and it is affecting the Capricorns, Cancers, and Aquarians. Next is the Mercury retrograde. Mercury went retrograde on May 29th and will be retrograde until June 22nd. Will not break free from the shadow until July. So this is the communication planet and it creates communication disruptions like cell phone service, internet connections, blackouts, misunderstandings, and fights with others. This is definitely affecting our Geminis, our Virgos, and Jupiter retrograde is coming up on June 20th and will be retrograde until October 21st, 2021. And this will be affecting the Sagittarius and the Pisces and also our value systems. So, and lastly, Neptune retrograde will be June 25th through December 2nd of 2021. This is going to affect the Pisces and anywhere is Pisces in your chart. And we're going to be going inward with that. All right. Announcements. Last but not least, I have three workshops that I am offering for the price of $120. The value of it is 180. Well, the value of it is a lot more, but regularly 180, the price will be for 120. Between now and June 11th, it'll be 120, you get three workshops. All three of those workshops will be hosting once a month. So you can figure out what day and times that you can make it. Each month, this month in June, I will be hosting Friday, June 18th in person. If you cannot make in person and you're far away or you just want to be in the comforts of your own home, you will get access to my video recording with the PowerPoint slides. So either way, you're learning how to read your basic astrology birth chart in three different workshops. The first is the basic workshop. Second is the, or the intermediate workshop. And then third is advanced workshop. Also, I am selling my Moldavite bracelets. Okay, so I just got a new shipment of raw Moldavite beads. And I will be selling these. They are very hard to find. Um, they are selling out everywhere because they will be going up in value within the next year or two. They transform your life. And I will be selling bracelets with one Moldavite and look up your natal birth chart and create a Zodiac crystal bracelet with the rest of the beads for $80. So if that is something you're interested in, please click the link in my description box below and or message me for that. Actually, you can go to my Instagram and message me there because I do post my bracelets on my Instagram before I send them to my Etsy. If you would like a Moldavite bracelet, please get in touch with me. Especially if you want to level up and live your heart activating purpose 
and it drives miracles into your life. Well, that's super retrograde. <laughs> so out of it. Oh my God. All right. Well, stick around for the card reading and uh, a channeled message with my astro die. Okay. For this Gemini, the tarot card associated with Gemini is the lovers. So this new moon and solar eclipse all has to do with loving, harmonious relationships, values, alignment, and choices within these things. And that card reverse, if you're not in alignment with this, could be self-love, uh, disharmony, imbalance, misalignment, imbalance. So these uh, definitely... Uh, are asking to be aligned. All right, so let's start off with this new deck. Okay, okay. Oh, whoa. Oh, popped up. Two, color, a sign. You know, and I was talking about lighting, too. has a lot to do with color. Each color of the light spectrum has its own ray and its own energetic vibration, which is the zodiacs, right? Which interact with and affect our personal energetic vibration, just like our chakras. Color can have a profound effect on your mood, vitality, and well being. We all know that because red elicits anger and passion, orange elicits hunger. So color can have a profound effect on your mood, vitality, and well-being. Today, experience the creative healing and calming effect that a color meditation brings. Sit quietly and connect to your breath. Imagine you are sitting under a celestial, magical, vibrant rainbow filled with many colors. Allow each pearlescent and opalescent color to flow over you, through you, gold, silver, Copper, platinum, violet, purple, magenta, lilac, indigo, pink, blue, emerald, green, yellow, orange, red, and ruby. Oh, that's a lot of colors. Breathe the colors in one by one and sit in each color as long as you need to. Let them all pass through and, and dissolve away into the light around you. Into oneness. As your light channel expands, feel magic and tingling sensation moving through you, healing and soothing all of you. Connect to your breath and move back into your day with added energy, balance, and creativity. Know the treasure at the end of the rainbow resides within you. Wow, that is a beautiful card. I have not picked that yet, so that's exciting. And a sign. A sign. Sit qu quietly and close your eyes. Ask your higher self to show you a sign that represents your highest development for this life. Whatever comes will be the most perfect sign to breathe life into your highest will at this time. Your sign may be a color, a feeling, an inkling, a memory, a guide, or an angel. Something abstract or a symbol. Imagine your sign is gently floating in front of you. Light, energy, and wisdom shine from your sign and saturate every part of you. All this, all is transformed, giving you full access. Oh, excuse me. Full access to your higher will and courage. Be inspired by this newly found part of you. Allow it to reveal your highest development, your highest path. What makes you happiest? Open your eyes and continue to flow through your day. Oh, I like that. I'm going to do both of those. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a journey of love and then a animal spirit. And then I'll roll the dice for a channeled message and pull some tarot cards. So, oh, there it goes. Guardian of the soul family, 26. You are being drawn to kindred spirits 
in this physical world by loving guardians in the spiritual world. If you feel you're leaving relationships behind, do not be afraid. The space that such courageous action creates is something necessary in order to have room for the new to enter your sphere of consciousness. You may also feel that somehow a relationship that seemed to be held back from you is now becoming available to you. There is a great soul love calling you into more intimate connections now. It is sanctioned by the divine. It is a karmic destiny to fulfill. There is love that you are to experience in connection with particular souls, predetermined by the divine plan. If you're struggling to feel the soul purpose in your current relationships, take heart for you are being helped by the divine guardians who understand and support the sacred purpose of your relationships. Be open to current relationship healing, whether that means improved communication and enriched experiences or the realization that you have traveled as far as you can together. And now that new relationships are going to be an important aspect of your spiritual destiny being fulfilled, trust in the divine timing of your life and open your heart to the guardians who help you with unconditional love now. The guidance of this oracle for you is that relationship healing is taking place in present relationships unfolding and attracting the right relationship for your future growth and in leaving behind relationships of the past with a peaceful heart. Be gentle with your heart, beloved, because all is well. When I open my heart, you cover me with a blanket of love and warm the silence with your caresses. Words and spoken say it all as we become more than we are alone. Ah, what a beautiful card for this Gemini new moon. Pretty much on point with my reading as well. So I always appreciate when spirit gives me uh, cards that align with the message of the Zodiac. All right, now for the animal spirit card. What animal spirit are we focusing on? The rabbit. Beep, beep. What's up, Gigi? Miss Gigi. Aw, Miss Doggy, you love, you love Miss Gigi, huh? Both Miss Gigi. Afraid of everything, overwhelmed and frozen. Oh my God, that's so the energy because Gemini is so quick and fast, but because it's retrograde and being combusted by the sun, everything's kind of unclear and everything's kind of frozen because of the retrogrades that are all happening. Uh, the heaviest retrogrades are going to be in August and September. We're going to have like five planets retrograde. So uh, the retrograde season has begun and Mercury is retrograde. And this is um, the, the highlighting planet of this transit. So the rabbit loves to remind his friends that someday the eagle will swoop down and eat him. He talks and talks and talks about it so loudly, in fact, that one day the eagle hears and thinks for him um, and thinks and thanks him for the great idea. The rabbit energy is alive when we are scared, most often about the future, and we become our own worst enemy. We spin up a dust of cloud of fear and then complain to others that we are lost. Notice your thoughts and words, O oh rabbit. They shape your destiny. So true. When in balance, sensitive problem solver and good listener. And when this rabbit energy is out of balance, it over explains and talks back. And to bring this into balance is a day of silence. All right, guys. That is the reading for this new moon. And now I'm going to get to. From uh, channel messages. I'm going to re roll that. Channel message. Oh, Gemini, ninth house sun. So, okay, so like Libra risings then. Ninth house, okay, of higher education. 
spirituality, what we believe. Okay. So we are definitely shifting what we believe at this time. Maybe for the longest time, we believed that relationships would never be available to us. Maybe we believed that we would never find a good match because we are so different. Maybe our belief was that we would be stuck in a job or a marriage that we hated. Okay. So we are learning to believe and trust that the universe and spirit is and is working on if it has not already sent the person that perfectly matches us because Gemini is the card of the love and the twins. Okay. So there's a lot of twin flames too that are being awakened. There's a lot of twin flame uh, relationships that are shifting into a brand new journey. And this could be a journey of uh, separation or a journey of union. And I'm going to pick a card for this. All right. What is it? Strength card? Nope. The fool. Woo. The fool. We are embarking on a brand new adventure. This is the zero, okay, card in the tarot. See at the top? Zero. Brand new cycle. Things are manifesting. And we want to make sure that we are creating what we want to manifest in this world. Um, the fool is associated with the planet Uranus. And Uranus is in Taurus. So this is a brand new in our value. Like <laughs> how we and what we love is changing. Our abundance is changing. Our value systems are changing, right? Crypto is our new value system. And um, I'm going to pick another tarot for my other deck. We're embarking on brand new, brand new stuff. Ooh, the eight of wands. And it was reversed when I first saw it. So upright would be movement, fast, pace, change, action, alignment, air travel. But right now, there's a lot of things being reevaluated, re looked at. So these are delays. Delays can create frustrations and resisting change and internal alignment. So as the physical world around us is changing, people are coming, people are going, uh, our careers, our homes, like everything's kind of shifting and changing around. People are getting shuffled, shuffled around to align with certain destinies and uh, uh, timelines. Um, we're having this, we could be having this internal struggle with aligning with all the changes and trusting in the process. So um, with that being said, the uh, the eight of wands reverse is suggest that you are, you are uh, charging ahead with ideas or plans, but you need to slow down and consider your next steps before continuing. You may miss something in your haste and be prone to making mistakes or poor decisions or you may rush into things without a clear plan of where you're heading instead of investing time into trivial tasks. So beware of the bright, shiny object syndrome, where just as you get started on implementing a new idea, another one comes to mind and you switch your focus. Um, the trouble is that with this approach, you never accomplish anything because you are jumping from one idea to the next and finishing none of them. So be mindful of this and getting in your way of your abundance. All right. Last but not least, I'm going to pick a symbol card to meditate on and to focus on this new moon. Well, there was two that popped out. The tree of life. Truth, wisdom, and making good choices in life, okay? And Trinka 5, 
manifesting money and income. Five, five, five. Ooh, five, five, five of change. These are the two cards. So all my Geminis or Geminis in the ninth houses and pretty much that reading was just for the collective for this new moon solar eclipse in Gemini. Thank you for sticking around for the reading until the end of the video. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. Um, <coughs> commenting and likes help drive more traffic to my channel so more people can be inspired by my astrology energy update so please like and share why not sharing is caring thank you for stopping in and i hope that you uh, come to my workshop uh, and if you would like to know more about what I do, you can go to my website, www.lucidlivingmovement.com. And I will see you guys for the next huge transit. All right. Peace out. Your Lucid Living Coach, Karina.